In this video, I will first focus on the underlying question many people seem to ask, how can I make my life happy and successful? Therefore, we'll explore practical steps and insights on how to lead a happier and more successful life. Unfortunately, it's easy to complicate things, especially while under stress. But with the right approach, you can simplify your path to success. So let's delve into the methods which can help you reconnect with your core self and navigate life's journey with greater ease. Introduction to self-connection. So, how do you create happiness in your life? Professional marketers and advertisers know this is a key question on most people's minds every day. They count on it, with hopes they can influence you with a bombardment of well-crafted advertisements on buying everything from high-ticket items, like a new fancy car, a new set of clothes, a dream vacation to the trivial of what you will eat for lunch today. Then there are those among us who are eager to win at the casino, hoping for the always elusive dream of striking it big. Then some people have a simpler fix on happiness. They just say, I'm going to Disneyland. The bottom line is that marketers and advertisers will entice you to overspend to get your temporary fix of happiness. It's the instant gratification many people require that drives the vast majority of purchases. We've all been there. Ask yourself, how long does it last? For most usually up until the time the first payment is due, when it feels like a ton of bricks fell on your head, or the sudden realization you lost your entire paycheck at the casino. Now reality sets in and the temporary fix is over. They have a term for that nowadays, it's called buyer's remorse. But what is often overlooked or more accurately may not be known or may be simply ignored as some sort of voodoo is the simple act of reconnecting with our inner selves, the being, the awareness of being. But the being is held captive by a portion of the mind that is carefully crafting a stream of endless thoughts of your past mixed with the imagining of your future, sprinkling in the occasional what if, to dissuade you from diving too deep into your awareness, because the mind knows that is where every solution to happiness begins. The mind has a job, and that job is to protect you from yourself, from making silly mistakes, acting foolish, just as it has been taught by your grandparents, your parents, maybe your teachers, and peer pressure on the playground of life. The essence of simplicity in resolving life's complexities towards happiness lies in this fundamental connection to the inner awareness of being. By fostering this link through a variety of ways, most notably meditation, hypnosis, or simply just being still while working to slow down the constant stream of thoughts. This can prevent many unnecessary struggles and streamline our journey toward a happier and more successful life. The Art of Letting Go Many people have asked, what is the secret to a happy and successful life? The answer unequivocally is about letting go. Letting go of what you ask? Well, let's look into it. Letting go is about achieving a state of permanent release by embracing the present through releasing what is readily possible. We are not looking for short-term solutions here. Be warned, will all that happen in one go? No, it requires a commitment to your well-being, so are you really ready? First, an examination into what is the driving force of the consistent unhappiness or continuing lack of success. This requires a personal journey of introspective awareness, where each person must make an honest effort to narrow down the root cause of the lack of happiness and or success. Once an honest effort achieves its goal of locating the ever-elusive cause of your unhappiness or lack of success, then that allows upping the game to the next level. But beware of falsehoods, subliminal misunderstandings, or implanted narratives. So what do I mean here? Well, it's important to recognize not all inner thoughts are your own. Not all feelings are based on real events in your life. And not all emotional trauma is the product of being victimized. It is important not to kid yourself by moving deeper into your inner world to locate that elusive rock, hiding the real reason for keeping you stuck where you are. For example, it's been popular these days with the ever-growing number of psycho, therapists, and psychologists who have been taught to focus the blame on the parents as the only real cause of many people's misery. Are the parents blameless? No, they are the product of their parents, their communities, and the era they grew up in, not to mention their age at the time of giving birth to you. But rather than blaming the parents for their misgivings, it might be more helpful to focus on the issues. By training people to let go, helping one realize it's much easier than playing the blame game which could cause potential resentment and prolonged agony. So, with deep, honest introspection and the issue, as are realized, it's crucial to focus on letting go of that which is within your reach, mentally, without struggling or setting unrealistic expectations. This process reduces noise and distractions, allowing for a clearer perception of the ever-present space that underpins our experiences and your awareness of being. Recognizing the unmanifest, diving a little deeper as we go, the question often arises, 
What is the number one key to happiness? As a simple answer, there probably is not one key, but several. But if I had to put to the forefront a major key to happiness, it would have to be understanding the difference between the manifest and the unmanifest. Let me explain. So, what is the manifest? Well, it is best described as our material world, what we call a solid world, which is made up of the three main elements, the solid, the liquid, and the gaseous. If you learned this in school, then you already know. If not, then this is what everything is made of in our existence or reality as we like to think of it. As we also know or should know, all elements can change states of being, meaning solids can be melted into liquid and then into gaseous states of existence. Liquids can be made solid and then gaseous and then gaseous can be made solid and so on. Granted, this is an oversimplification, but you get the point. But then the real question becomes, where do these elements come from? Well, without getting too philosophical here, I'll cut to the chase. The quantum universe. Hopefully you all have some knowledge of the quantum universe. Where things are so small, most cannot be seen, so what do I mean? Well, take the electron. It's so small it has never been seen to this day, but yet we have electricity. Go figure. So how is this a major key to our happiness, you ask? Well, let's look at it in this light. Our world is created and can only exist by drawing its energy, raw material, needed vibrational force, and Einstein's spooky science from the quantum universe, which then is used by an unknown force made into everything we know, love and hate. So who or what is causing this to happen? There are many answers, most scare people, but let's face it. It's the collective consciousness calling into existence all that is... Visit any part of the world and ask any average adult you meet. Are we living on a planet spinning in a solar system, inside a galaxy, inside the universe? What would they say? Most would agree and say, yes. Of course. What a stupid question. Okay, I know there are exceptions, the flat earthers, those who believe in the matrix theory, and those who think we are inside a video game of sorts, to name a few. But an overwhelming majority, in my opinion, would agree with the question. Point is, this demonstrates a collective consciousness pulls from the source of the unmanifest quantum universe, that which is needed to create our current reality, as we see, hear, smell, touch, and taste now. Therefore, not until the collective as a majority has a change of mind will what we perceive as reality change, because all perceptions are focus-based where? Only one place, in your mind. Okay, so where does that leave you in this equation? The quantum is the infinite source of all unmanifested and the manifested is simply a conscious belief. Then it stands to reason your beliefs are the driving force behind your focused unhappiness or lack of success. If your truth is you are unlucky, why would the quantum universe argue with that point of view? If your belief is everything you touch turns to gold, why would the quantum universe argue with that point of view either? See where this is going? You, yourself, are the major key to your happiness. Understanding the difference between the manifest, tangible, and the unmanifest, source of potential, is key to accessing your true power. Most focus solely on the physical world, missing the strength found in the formless, which is the ultimate source of energy and potential that has been scientifically proven over a century ago. Recognizing this source can and will empower you, leading to a life of fulfillment rather than one of frustration and limitation. Discover true desires. In this section, we have to focus because the reality is this is by far what most people fail to grasp and ultimately end up not seeing any real results in finding their happiness and or success. Everyone has desires. Wanting to be happy and successful is the perceived desire in this case. But what is causing the lack of either happiness or success? So, for example, I am not happy because I don't have my dream job or I am not happy because I don't have the relationship of my dreams. Or maybe it's because I never get ahead financially. You see where this is going. Therefore, identifying what you truly want is a fundamental step toward happiness and success. But wait, is your desire truly yours? Remember, short-term fixes do not lead to long-term happiness. Objectively looking deep within, there we go again, having to still that mind to focus on what is truly desired will bring a long-term solution to this perceived never-ending problem. So, what do you do? It is recommended to do it the old-fashioned way, paper and pencil, Start by creating a list of desires that could make you happy. Then look at each item carefully and begin to focus on having it. Here is an example. Let's say you are looking for the perfect relationship. Your dream is a supermodel. Killer, right? After careful consideration, you should realize a supermodel has to spend 8 to 10 hours a day working at being a supermodel. Then there is the cost of maintenance, the high-profile engagements, and of course, 
Don't forget the jealousy that mostly comes with such a relationship. Okay, maybe that's a bit extreme. Let's focus on the house. Nothing fancy that should satisfy the happiness requirement. You live in a $300,000 house now with a $1,900 mortgage, and your desire is, let's say, to have a $1 million house to own free and clear. Cool, right? No payments, but then comes the insurance bill. Oh, and yes, the annual property tax bill. And then there is the maintenance. Everything costs two to three times more. Okay, I think you get the picture. As the old saying goes, be careful what you wish for. Now you can see how engaging in the activity of writing your list in this discovery process helps in aligning your life with your genuine aspirations. Writing down your desires can clarify your goals and foster a deeper understanding of what brings you honest fulfillment toward happiness and success. Overcoming limiting beliefs. Coming toward the end of our journey together, we must not underestimate the need to address the issue of dissolving limiting beliefs, a crucial object which if not taken will foster only disappointment. In order for personal growth to occur for a sustained life of happiness and success, dissolving limiting beliefs is monumental. Now don't get me wrong, Following these steps will not make every day come and go without a glitch here and there, but what it will do is how you handle the ups and downs as they materialize in everyday life. So, how do we discover what our limiting beliefs are and how do we get rid of them? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Remember that paper and pencil, we'll break it out again. Write each limiting belief down, an example of a limiting belief. Money is the root of all evil, and you are no good at math because your second grade teacher called you stupid for failing your times table test. By recognizing and writing down these beliefs, we bring them into conscious awareness, which is the first step in overcoming them. A belief is not just a thought, it's a combination of thought and emotion that defines your reality. By challenging and then changing these beliefs by actively dismissing them one by one as no longer being a part of you, repeatedly if necessary, can lead to significant improvements in our lives. And there you have it. I hope this information is helpful. To your happiness and success, stay tuned for more videos.